very good morning uh, my dear students i am dr mc nataraja professor from the department of civil engineering ramaya institute of technology msrit let me have the pleasure of uh, welcoming all of you for my last session being uh, the session 7 under the module 5 design of beams and today i will be discussing about uh, connections and some of the few simple topics uh, mentioned in your syllabus so the last uh, component of the syllabus is to know bit of uh, beam to beam connections and beam to column connection and about the splices what these connections are as far as steel structure is concerned and how these connections look like and how these connections are needed to be designed what are the various forces that comes uh, near the connection what different types of fasteners we can look for to get the connection and how the connection itself is behaving whether it is behaving in a simple manner where it is flexible where the connection is not able to carry any moment and sometimes it can be as high rigid as that it can be subjected to substantial amount of moment with a bit of rotation possible and also we can uh, connect the sections depending on the available length if the length is not available so then we have to go for the splice concept from the point of uh, connection and getting the required length so this splice can be applied uh, even for beam or even for column depending on the situation so let us see some of these things uh, Uh, in uh, subsequent slides why we need to have a connection and uh, what are the importance of connections so obviously it is uh, from the limitation of the length of the member available and this is mainly from the consideration of uh, rolling constraints and transportation constraints so definitely it is not possible to have any length of the member and the length need to be restricted to 8 meters or 10 meters or 12 meters and sometimes 15 meter depending depending on what type of transportation facilities are available uh, at the site where we need to fabricate the steel structure and sometime uh, your structure itself is uh, very large where uh, the span of the beam is uh, 8 to 10 meters or 12 meters and the column height can be as as, as high as 10 to 12 meters in such situation sometimes it is extremely difficult to get one single section and we need to join the section and that is where splicing and uh, connection comes into picture and also in a multi story building you see all the members needed to be connected by one way or the other so that the forces uh, that are acting at the joint need to be transferred the structure is only as strong as the weakest link i don't want the connection to be the weakest link the connection should be at least equal to the strength of the member so that connection is not going to fail and if at all there is a member if at all there is a failure the member has to undergo failure and your connection should be strong so this is where ensuring the safety of the connection and the efficiency of the connection and also the economical considerations with, with which we do the design also comes into picture we need to utilize the full strength of the member in any design so that's where the limit state of strength of the member comes into picture but see to that see to it that the connection is also equally strong and connection analysis design is many a times complicated because of the complicated uh, stresses that exist uh, in the connection and ensuring uh, a gradual yielding and a ductile yielding many a times is difficult but still we need to exercise all possible precautions to see that the failure of the connection is usually not ducted so this is where we need to ensure that the failure is uh, really really happens uh, in a ductile manner to the extent possible now if you see one uh, sketch which i have taken from the google so this gives the description of a multi story building a symmetric multi story building consists of series of columns and beams of course you also have the connection of the column to the base that is where the slab base or the gusseted base comes into picture so and different types of fasteners are used uh, to form the connection so that is where the welded connection bolted connections riveted connection pin connection comes into picture 
I'm not going to the greater details of all these things because uh, many of these things uh, have been discussed uh, uh, in the earlier classes. So we get uh, different combinations of the loads uh, on the member and finally those forces get transferred to the connection. So that is where uh, a joint in the form of a connection need to be designed for the axial force sometimes for shear force combinations of axial force and shear force and sometimes we also have a moment thereby the combination of shear and moment axial force and moment axial force shear force and moment combination and many such type of combinations you must have seen while designing the member but when you go to the connection a similar type of forces also need to be transferred to the connection where the fasteners in the form of a weld fastener in the form of a bolt or rivet also has to resist that force and also the combinations of the forces friends i have presented here uh, one uh, diagram this is taken from the google so this is where uh, we will be able to see the complexity of the connection where uh, two horizontal beams are connected to an intermediate column so this is something like a beam to column connection that is coming from both the sides and kindly see the fasteners being used so they are the high strength uh, bolts and if you see the top flange and the bottom flange we have provided some stiffness and also there is an end plate and all these things are connected by through boards and uh, where we have uh, SMA boards so it is uh, a special bolt uh, uh, which is a smart bolt actually it uh, goes through the hole across the two sides of the flanges and thereby the plate along with the flange can be connected to the required tightness so where the force in the bolt uh, is equal to the design force so what i want to tell you my dear students the connection here is uh, so complex and we really cannot say how this particular connection is really behaving i will come to the classification of the connection whether it is a simple connection or a flexible connection or a semi-rigid or a rigid so if you really want to identify the complexity of the connection and then identifying to what extent the moment can be transferred to the connection and what is the rotation that happens with that moment so we need the relation between moment and of course the curvature if the relationship is straight and where uh, we have a behavior looking something like this so that can be treated as a simple connection where a very very small amount of moment can be transferred or practically it is very difficult to see that the moment really cannot be transferred very small amount of moment uh, comes into picture but from the point of design that moment is almost small and that can be neglected so we also have a situation where uh, we will be welding a connection so where the strength of the weld is also very high and the section and the connection it is so rigid uh, that that particular connection and the section is really not able to undergo rotation so where substantial amount of moment can be transferred at that particular location so this is where uh, a rigid behavior of the connection comes into picture and practically it is difficult to have a connection which is behaving something like this so true rigid behavior and true flexible behavior so true flexible behavior is uh, in a situation where a beam is connected to a column where the number of bolts are rather less so it is just uh, the member being held in position but we will be able to apply some load maybe the load at the time of uh, fabrication as an erection load still it behaves like a simple connection but when you put few bolts maybe it is able to resist some moment but it is really not flexible so some amount of moment carrying capacity comes into picture and that can be increased further depending on what type of connector is being considered whether an angle web angle flange angle whether we have the angle both the top and bottom whether we are using t sections as uh, the connectors and whether sufficient number of bolts are being used and if it is welded so how exactly it is welded all round welding and thereby the stiffness of the connection comes into picture and with that so we have the classification and kindly see the requirements of connection from the point of design as i mentioned we need to look for the strength that is where the limit state of strength comes into picture and we need to look for the stiffness also so this is where uh, the serviceability requirements uh, comes into picture and ductility so this is where the yielding of the section so in fact uh, 
we assume uh, in a multi-story analysis or in a frame analysis or in a fixed beam analysis that the joint is ductile and it has to undergo plastification and with that plastification it also has to undergo rotation so that's where the concept of hinge comes into picture so we need to design the connection in such a way that too much of residual stress and too much of uh, what do you call uncertainty related factors comes uh, from the point of design otherwise you really cannot ensure ductility and there is every possibility that the joint can fail so deflection control and stability under the service load is a very important uh, point to be considered and of course uh, as the load increases beyond uh, the elastic limit so we have uh, larger and larger deformation coming into picture and uh, the ductility factor at the ultimate load from the point of formation of hinge is also the criteria so this is what uh, the few photos uh, uh, taken from the google in fact i have downloaded this from the uh, this doc material and uh, the first uh, two photos at the top you can see so this is where uh, the bolted sorry this is where the riveted connection uh, uh, is being used so one example is uh, the Havara bridge and many of the old structures and uh, the railway bridges if you see and even today if you go to any railway station the old railway stations we do find these types of uh, connections and uh, these steel structures where it is uh, the rivet the fastener from the point of formation of the connection and you also have uh, a framed connection in an industrial building kindly see here the junction of the inclined beam and the column that also appears to be inclined so it is an inclined gable and at the junction where you have tremendous amount of moment so we have uh, the rigid connection behavior and we also have the stiffness to see that uh, the web at the junction is uh, not undergoing secondary failure and of course uh, this is another uh, photograph where uh, different types of connections uh, you can make out from a closer look friends uh, from the point of uh, classification of the connection as i mentioned earlier so if you take uh, a joint in a multi story frame so we have the columns projecting at the top and bottom from the junction and we have a horizontal beam and kindly see the original beam which is uh, like uh, a T uh, where the angle between the members is 90 degree and when it undergoes the deformation where the joint rotates so the final shape is going to be something like this now kindly see what happens at this junction as far as the three members are concerned so if you try to draw the tangent to the curved portion because the curvature of the member has started from some distance but it is not really starting from the point where the three members meet and that is where uh, some sort of a rigid movement of the joint happens thereby the angle between the two members that was there before the load remains same even after the load is being applied but the joint rotates but kindly see the members connected at that particular point is not going to rotate so this is where uh, the rigidity comes into picture so because the whole body rotates as a free body but the individual members do not undergo rotation with respect to the other member so this is what the situation we call it as a rigid connection where transfer of enormous moment comes into picture so this is what we have seen in the behavior also the moment curvature relationships in the previous slides and this is what the moment in the member now if you see the simple one or the flexible one so the column is quite intact even after the application of the load but the load on the beam when it is uh, transferred to the joint so the member is undergoing uh, bending something like this so this is something like the behavior of a uh, simply supported beam so the deflection profile is something like this and you can draw a tangent to the deflection curve here from the joint so we have a substantial value of theta being the slope so this is where the joint is uh, not able to carry any moment the moment is zero but we have the reaction coming from the beam so only for the reaction the joint need to be designed so here it is a beam connected to the column where the fastener in the form of a bolt or in the form of a uh, weld need to be designed for the vertical reaction and that vertical reaction is uh, the shear force so no moment comes into picture so these are all the uh, two extreme cases but in practice if you see in a multi-story building we will be providing sufficient number of bolts 2 3 4 5 10 so thereby the rigidity of the connection also comes into picture 
where the joint is really not 100% flexible. It's not behaving like a simply supported bay, but certain amount of moment gets transferred. So that is where uh, it is a combination of moment rotation uh, uh, situation, certain amount of rotation and certain amount of bending moment the members are able to carry. And that is where the angle between the two members, kindly see the vertical column and the horizontal bay. So the angle is 90. So even after the rotation, it is a rigid body rotation. So it is still 90 because the joint is uh, safe. So no change in deformation has happened, but you will be able to see the 90 degree. But here kindly see if you draw a tangent to the deflected line and if you try to measure this angle, so this appears to be more than 90 degree means uh, the joint is undergone rotation, but still it is able to carry certain moment. So this is uh, what the general behavior of most of the connections in steel. So it is a semi rigid uh, connection and uh, definitely ensuring 100% uh, rigidity is not possible many times. And kindly say one particular uh, uh, combinations of the uh, diagrams. So beam to column connection. So in fact, beam to column connection is also one topic in the syllabus. So different ways of connecting a horizontal beam to the column comes into picture. So kindly see. So here we have used the bolts and combinations of uh, weld and bolt. And also we have used uh, different types of uh, connectors, angles, plates and T sections. And of course, we also have end plate and sometimes the web to the column also need to be uh, strengthened by putting some sort of a extended end plate. Thereby the moment carrying capacity of the connection can be increased and the secondary failure of the web of the column can also be avoided. When this particular beam tries to bend and offer a resistance against the moment, uh, so that resistance gets transferred and probably buckling of the web of the column can happen here and that need to be controlled by putting these extended end plates. Now come to the very simple case where you have a beam connected to column. So we have a small reaction and kindly see here the beam is really not touching the column. So it is getting separated. So the question of transfer of moment also doesn't come into picture and hardly two boards are being uh, connected here and these two boards because of the angle section to the front where you are seeing and to other side. So there may be an angle or there may not be an angle. If you have one angle to this side and no angle to that side, it is a single angle case and sometimes two angles comes into picture. Both the angles are connected to the two flanges and thereby we have to have the bolts not only for the beam, even for the flanges, one to the front and one to the back. Either one set or set of two, set of three, set of four, depending on the size of the beam and the column. So here the connection just transfers the reaction as a shear and based on the shear and also based on the shear strength of the bolt or bearing strength of the bolt and also by calculating what is the bolt value, the reaction by the bolt value will be able to calculate what is the number of bolts here. So that is where the design concept comes into picture but here the bolts are subjected to double shear but when you take uh, the connectivity of the beam to the column, so it is only one plate connected to the flange and it is a case of single shear. Of course one set to the front and one set to the back also we have and it is a case of double shear as far as the flange of the beam is concerned, uh, sorry web of the beam is concerned but as far as the flange of the column is concerned it is a single shear case otherwise in the web it is a double shear case. So the number of bolts can be calculated. But this is the situation where the joint is uh, almost like a uh, yeah, flexible joint. It is a simple joint and very very small amount of moment probably will be able to carry and that is neglected from the practical point of view. Now kindly see the situation of the second one where uh, I am putting a seat angle not only at the top and but also at the bottom and that is where uh, the rotation of the beam with respect to the column can be reduced and a small amount of moment carrying capacity comes into picture but still it is not 100% rigid. This is where the semi rigid behavior comes into picture and slightly more of semi rigid behavior here because we are first connecting the beam so to the plate and that plate is connected to the flange of the column by bolting. So partial bolting and partial welding comes into picture and slightly little more moment can be applied as far as the joint is concerned. But kindly see here so again the beam is supported by an angle so this is where uh, a seated connection type comes into picture and this is also sometimes referred to as the bottom flange both are being connected properly so the beam is 
being rested on the angle and the angle is connected to the column and thereby certain amount of force gets transferred but if you see the compression flange so that also has been held very firmly so internal connection and also the connection to the flange of the column has happened so thereby so still a higher force can be transferred as a, a reaction with little more uh, bending moment comes into picture at this junction but this is uh, still becoming stiffer and this is uh, still more stiffer and here more of welding and here uh, welded connection uh, effect is uh, still more compared to the effect of the ports so right from one going up to the last one eight so we have the combinations of the uh, weld and bolt coming into picture and different types of additional plates are being considered here angles are being considered but when you take this situation we have a t section at the top and another t section at the bottom so t itself is very strong compared to angle but both are connected so thereby some amount of bending moment can be applied at this joint as well but here the connection is becoming uh, very stiff so thereby moment carrying capacity is also becoming larger and larger and kindly see here so we have plate and also we have stiffness and thereby the rotational effect of the horizontal beam is further reduced all these things if you remember case 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and if you really see the behavior in the form of a curve where the moment carrying capacity at the joint with respect to what the rotation the joint is undergoing and we have an idealized case of rigid where uh, the rotation alone increases but moment carrying capacity is almost zero that is uh, ideally not possible to have a situation like that but practically that can be treated as uh, a simple connection pinned connection or even a very simple connection something like this so this is what the situation but the real situation what i have shown in number one it is something like this kindly see here as you increase the load the rotation keep on increases and it becomes almost uh, like horizontal the rotation is increasing the moment carrying capacity has become constant but it is a very very small amount of moment so kindly if you extend it here about 40 kilo newton of moment still the joint is taking there's not a small moment but the order of moment that comes in multi-story building considering the heaviness of the load and the lateral effects uh, so the moment is very high so 200 300 400 kilo newton meter of moment comes into picture and this simple joint cannot take that order of a moment so what i want to tell you is uh, whatever is the simplicity with which you make a joint something like this though it is very close to simple uh, behavior but still a small amount of moment you will be able to transfer but that can be neglected so that's what the importance of a simple connection or uh, a pin connection but as you make the connection uh, becoming robust where uh, you have some additional angles additional plates and more number of boards and bit of uh, weld coming into picture so the behavior will be something like this so of course it is non-linear but the curve will become a, a sort of a curve tending to bend towards the vertical axis thereby the moment carrying capacity with respect to rotation increases so as you increase the rotation the moment carrying capacity also increases but the moment carrying capacity is maximum but the rotation capacity is becoming small and small so this is where uh, practical connections comes into picture so this is where uh, the semi-rigid type of behavior but this is uh, theoretically 100 percent rigid where it carries only moment but not undergoing a rotation but still some amount of rotation do happen in all practical connections so that is where the top curve that is where the non-linearity in the behavior comes into picture so kindly see the situation where you have a moment close to something like uh, 250 so still the beam is assumed to have a rigid connection but the connection undergo a very very small rotation equal to 0 0.004 radians and also you can calculate what is the theta connected with that 0 0.004 radian and a very small inclination and a small departure from the original position as a curvature you will be able to observe so with this uh, let us move on to different types of uh, beam to column connections so kindly say beam connected to column using a single angle angle 
one onto one side of the web and of course you have one to other side so we are connecting three boards through the angle so these boards are subjected to double shear and of course uh, what I showed in the previous slide so where the connection of the angle to the column flange so single shear so this is a simple shear uh, case but this is how the side looks like and uh, kindly see here uh, so the angle is not uh, uh, connected to the flange so in fact this is not the angle as you can see here only one single plate is being used as a tab so it is just a flat the flat is used to connect the horizontal uh, element which is the beam and the entire assembly is now connected to the column by welding so that is, that is uh, what the situation will be able to see here so kindly see this situation where uh, you are not putting any plate but the connection is uh, something like this where the beam is completely welded so for this we are using a uh, one small plate also here so that is where the connection comes into picture and then welding also comes into picture and some more complicated uh, situation where both welds and uh, boards are to be designed and of course uh, the connection is uh, becoming uh, more towards the rigid so thereby more of rigid behavior and uh, less of simple behavior so a semi rigid situation coming into picture here and of course it is what the behavior uh, what I was mentioning but even in a rigid situation what I have shown is uh, the moment simply increases and increases but with a very small rotation but once the critical moment reaches where the joint is about to reach its uh, maximum value and with that plastification effect the rotation keep on increases and increases like anything so indicating that the failure has already started so some more uh, diagrams of uh, beam to column connection where more number of uh, boards are being used so here it is able to carry more load so what is the strength of each of these boards in uh, double shear the bolt value on double shear into four boards so that's what the force will be able to apply here as a shear and similarly kindly see here so it is a single shear case one two three four boards on the other side there is four boards so eight boards eight bolt multiplied by the bolt value in single shear if we calculate we are going to get the force that can be applied at this joint so that is what the uh, capacity of the joint from the point of design so similarly so you have the same connection but uh, welded at the top and also at the bottom so you can also see the weld so along the depth of the web and of course we also have a connector to ensure that two plates are initially connected to the web and through that connector so we will be welding the web of the eye section and uh, this is uh, another uh, situation similar to one uh, diagram which I showed in the previous case. So when this beam tries to undergo rotation because we have put the weld at top and weld at bottom and that concentrated effect uh, might be pushing the web and thereby some sort of a buckling effect happens as per the web of the column is concerned. So that is where the buckling of the web can be controlled by putting this plate. And kindly see this plate is not only connecting the web of the column, it is also connecting the flange. So thereby when this beam rotates, so whatever the deformation that goes to the connection, initially that transfer to the flange and the flange is also not undergoing buckling because there is a plate here, not only at the bottom and even at the top. Uh, so the flange is not getting separated away, thereby some curling of the flange also likely to happen as far as uh, this portion of the flange is concerned. So this plate prevents the flange going away and this plate uh, prevents the flange being moved uh, towards the center of the column. So this is where the stiffening of the web and the stiffening of the flange comes into picture. So that is where some sort of a box type of situation we will be able to see. So these are the additional plates and all the secondary failures uh, resulting because of the rotation of the joint can be addressed and of course this is more of a rigid situation and where certain percentage of uh, moment can be applied but the joint still undergo bit of rotation. So a few more uh, examples to appreciate uh, how exactly the connection is being done at the top. So this is referred to as a clip angle top and the clip angle at the bottom. So this can also be used as a seated angle. This helps in uh, erection also. So initially we need to have these types of angles being connected to the column so that 
the beam can be hoisted lifted through crane and then it can be made to rest and then rest of the connection can be taken up inside so this is uh, the actual situation so this, these are the photographs where you will be seeing uh, too many bolts being used uh, to form the beam to column connection so on either side of the column we have two beams and uh, the flange at the top and the flange at the bottom is also being connected so you can also see the way the connection is being formulated so too many bolts obviously certain amount of moments comes into picture but uh, at the time of failure some rotation also happen so this is a similar type of situation but uh, the connection is uh, done by weld as a fastener so this is definitely more rigid compared to even this situation even though we have too many bolts but the rotation is definitely less in case of welding so this is one typical situation typical diagram of a multi-story structure where we will be able to appreciate the, the different types of joints where uh, beam connected to column on either side and in fact we have seen many such diagrams in the previous slide and here uh, it is the extreme top at the corner where one beam and one column comes into picture so a bit of eccentricity also comes here and you can also see the place where uh, some sort of a connection to the column is given so kindly see over the entire height of three story since we are not getting one single length of the i section so in the second third floor somewhere close to the floor but uh, not even close to the center somewhere uh, near the one third of the span or one quarter of the span of this column we have the connection so this is where the splice is provided so connecting the two elements of the column in order to get the required length where this splice itself need to be designed for certain amount of moments certain amount of shear and if required the horizontal load from the wind so this is uh, again another splice as you can see here column splice and these are all the place where this uh, inclined element which is acting like a brace is being connected and at the bottom of the column so we have the base slab base uh, gazetted base being the column bases and sometimes you can also have a grillage type of foundation if the sbc of the soil is relatively low so many many connections uh, what i am intend to describe in this uh, portion all these things can be seen and appreciated with the help of this multi-story frame again this is taken from the google source so let us see beam to beam connections and the design now the design here uh, as far as the simple connection is concerned it is very similar to beam to column connection so whatever the load that is acting on the beam that comes here as a reaction suppose if the reaction is uh, uh, 100 kilo newton and if the bolt value is close to 30 35 kilo newton so reaction by bolt value so you get about three bolts and that is what the three bolts you are putting it here but here the bolts are subjected to double shear because we have the angle on either side of the web of the beam but here the angle is connected to the web of the mine beam so this is a mine beam and this is a secondary beam so secondary beam to mine beam is what the connection is so a single shear case as far as a mine beam connection is concerned double shear case as far as a web of the secondary beam is concerned and if you see from this side so it looks something like this so this is a side view or the end view where you will be able to see the cross section of the eye section and whatever the bolts we have for the secondary and also for the primary which you are not able to make out in the elevation you will be able to make out very clearly in the end view and of course uh, this is a similar type of connection but uh, here we are using the bolts but here the all around the angle it is being welded so there is the only difference but the connection of the secondary beam with the mine beam as far as the web of the mine beam is concerned so it is still with the bolt so that's where the bolt connection as far as the mine web of the web of the mine beam is concerned but otherwise as far as the secondary beam web is concerned it is by welding so this is where the combination of bolt and uh, weld can be used so whatever is the situation so what the reaction that will be there here so that need to be transferred to the weld so determine the total length of the weld to the front and also to the back so L is known and you know what is the strength of the weld so 0.7 into length of the weld into the stress in the weld 
and uh, that is where uh, the total force resisted by the belt will be able to calculate and in the same way the force resisted by the bolt also can be calculated and that is where the maximum capacity of the bolt so can be determined and that is what the limitation as far as the reaction is concerned so anything more than that as a reaction causes the failure so a few more uh, diagrams so kindly say here the beam is connected to the web but when you take the beam so it is not possible uh, that you can take the flange so there is a reason a small portion of the flange is cut off so that the web of the secondary beam can go as close to the web of the main beam and kindly see there is a small gap so maybe to take care of the temperature variation with very high value of coefficient of thermal expansion of the steel and even if 10 15 20 degree rise in temperature introduces a certain amount of uh, uh, deformation and the corresponding strain is also quite considerable so joint will be subjected to thermal effect so to take care of uh, those things so we will be providing a gap of 5 mm to 10 mm in practice so this is with uh, bolted connection so this is partially with bolt and uh, welded connection and a uh, few more uh, examples where uh, different combinations uh, can be thought of instead of an angle we can also put a plate and weld it so this is uh, what the situation is here so this appears to be like an angle because we are not using the bolt as far as the web of the mine girder is concerned so obviously uh, we need not have to have the projection of the angle so it is like a flat so thereby it acts like a tab so this is the only bolt connection the rest is weld so that's what you are seeing in the side view also the next thing is uh, something connected with this splice so the art of joining two members is referred to as the splice so here uh, the splice is uh, being provided for the column and here you kindly see the two columns are of the same size so the, here there is a separation so this is what the place where we need to extend the length of the column a small gap of 5 mm still you can see here to take care of the temperature variation and sometimes it can be completely rested on the column so that the bearing effect comes into picture so that is what uh, one uh, condition that need to be looked at from the point of design whether there is a perfect contact of the two ends so perfect bearing exists or not so that is where the transfer of the column load to the connection comes into picture and if there exists 100 percent transfer of load where the contact is good where the bearing is good so we will be designing the connection for lesser load so there is where 50 percent of the load transferred onto the side comes into picture so there are many many such uh, design criteria uh, that need to be looked at but uh, since the design concept is uh, not uh, given importance much uh, so i'm not uh, discussing uh, in an elaborate manner but there are all the points that need to be looked at but kindly see here the webs of the two columns are being connected by two flats so one flat onto the front and of course you have a flat onto the other side also and this is not an angle so that you will be able to see from the plan and also you have the cover plate so not only to the outside and also to the inside so two cover plates comes into picture for each side for each of the flanges so you can either go by one cover plate or even two cover plates depending on the situation so the joint is uh, here uh, so appears to be very stiff uh, because transfer of moment also has to happen because in a multi-story building over the height of the column we have uh, substantial uh, variation of the bending moment coming into picture and also if there is any shear effect uh, as far as uh, the column splices are concerned that shear has to be taken care of by the central web and that is where designing the web for shear and providing certain number of uh, bolts and some minimum thickness of the plate everything uh, needs to be considered in the design so this is where uh, the column splice and its uh, connection comes into picture so this is with uh, bolt as a fastener but in the earlier days so rivets were being used now kindly see here uh, this is uh, slightly a better way of uh, putting the splice so again this is uh, taken from a google source so from uh, steelconstruction.info website and uh, this is uh, what the angle or even the plate so in this case it is plate because there is no bearing plate coming between the two eye section 
and sometimes we need to transfer a heavy concentrated load instead of transferring that load onto the flanges and web we will be putting some sort of a plate that is where the bearing plate comes into picture so kindly see the bearing plate where too much of a load can be transferred onto this plate so the load that is there on the column get transferred to the plate through the two flanges and that produces a moment as far as uh, the flange of the bottom column is concerned so that is where the eccentricity A comes into picture and with that eccentricity so this joint has to be designed from the point of moment the top one is an angle so the bottom one is also an angle because we have the plate and the connectivity of the top column with the bottom column through the bearing plate need to be established and in addition to that if there is a shear coming horizontally kindly see horizontal shear if it is coming that also has to be resisted by the web angle so kindly see the type of uh, plates being provided here so there is a cover plate onto the outside and uh, there is a gap between the bottom column and top column because of certain variation in the width of the column and you need to introduce uh, an additional packing plate so that we can form a tight connection and sometimes the packing plate is getting projected beyond the cover plate but here all plates are flushed at the same level so the number of uh, boards needed for the connection has to be determined so that is where uh, the determination of the force on each of the plate comes into picture and that divided by the bolt value so you'll be able to determine the number of bolts depending on whether the joint is in uh, single shear or double shear now kindly see the top situation so where the bolts are in double shear because the two one flange and one plate comes into picture but at the bottom it is a single shear case because we have one flange and one cover plate so based on the concept of single shear the number of bolts based on the concept of double shear the number of bolts and what is the load that is taken by one side of the system so that is where uh, the force for the connection comes into picture and uh, a similar force onto the other side and what is the total force for the joint as a whole where the joint is splice so to that extent of a force uh, as a vertical force and as a moment and as a shear can be transferred so if you really want to transfer uh, axial load and moment so again uh, so we need to determine what is the thickness of the bearing plate here because a certain amount of moment also comes into picture so based on the moment consideration so the thickness of the bolt so thickness of the uh, horizontal bearing plate also need to be determined so anyway so if any student is uh, interested in uh, you know, taking up one or two problems from the point of uh, uh, numerical design so you can uh, look to the textbook by Dugal SK Dugal design of steel structure by limit state method or even the textbook by Subramaniam and we have the textbook by Professor Bobby Kati there is also a reasonably good textbook and especially for the average students so that book really serves the purpose so the last one uh, is uh, the same column splice but uh, with the concept of welding so where uh, the top column is slightly smaller compared to the bottom column so since the sizes are different and also you need to have the sufficient area for welding so here a horizontal bearing plate is being provided so that you can establish a contact over a larger area and you can also provide sufficient length of weld if required horizontal weld for the web and the bearing plate can also happen not only at the top even at the bottom so that more axial load more moment and more shear can be applied at the junction and also see the situation of uh, the column ends being cut by a machine machine cut and a rough cut so it is a hand cutting and a machine cutting so that is where the perfect contact of top to bottom comes into picture so 100 percent bearing need to be ensured so that transfer of force uh, can happen automatically on its own but the force getting transferred to the connection decreases thereby you will be able to save the cost from the point of uh, fasteners being uh, provided uh, as a part of the design so this is uh, what the diagram i had shown uh, earlier to start with uh, this uh, i have presented and you can also ap appreciate now in a better way so how these uh, boards are being provided here so the 
horizontal beam in one direction and another horizontal beam in the other direction the two beams meeting at 90 degree so you can see the connection so here also you can see the connection from inside so the connection of the column to the top of the beam so an intermediate column is coming here and resting on the beam so kindly see the connection kindly see the stiffener and also kindly see the brace connected by three boards here and to accommodate that you have to have a bracket which is in turn connected not only to the beam as well as the column so all types of uh, uh, situations and all types of uh, connections so you'll be able to appreciate in this uh, three-dimensional uh, figure uh, corresponding to some sort of a multi-story structure so we also have uh, the concept of the splice the splice for the column i explained but this is the splice uh, for the beam so there uh, the splice itself can be subjected to moment so you also have the vertical shear moment coming into picture and sometimes you can also have the horizontal uh, thrust especially from a frame where you have the effect of the lateral load coming into picture of course uh, here the fabrication of the connection is not so sophisticated so that all depends on uh, the person who has uh, executed this job so let not worry much about that but what is important is to observe the splice plate connecting the two webs so this is what the flange plate used to connect the two flanges at the top and also at the bottom so six boards are being used on either side so totally 12 boards are there at the top and uh, eight boards for the web connection and similarly at the bottom so kindly see here so we have three and three to this side and three and three to the other side which you are not able to see so totally there are 12 boards 12 boards for the flange splice eight boards for the web splice and different types of uh, these splices depending on uh, the type of the fastener so you'll be able to see here so what you have here as a photo so that is this one where the connection is by weld but the same thing if you see here what i have is a schematic diagram here so that is the defection of uh, the real photo so or some combinations of uh, the situation so here it is just a matter of connection where i am not using any plates but the weld is such that uh, the required connectivity is ensured so maybe it is a small beam where the depth is not that much and moment shear and the axial force what probably will be able to apply here is so small that a small connection by welding as one line weld may be sufficient but if uh, the connection becomes somewhat uh, complicated so we need to have additional plates and combinations of the fasteners also depending on the situation friends so this is uh, what uh, the introduction to the connection and different types of connections especially the beam to beam connection beam to column connection and especially connection from the point of splice where the columns and beams are joined together in the situation of uh, certain length of the member is not available so what type of uh, fasteners needed to be used and what number of boards and what length of uh, weld so they're all the design concepts and what type of force and force combinations that comes into picture at the joint is also needed to be looked at and we also need to ensure uh, so many factors not only from the point of limit state of strength where collapse can happen and also from the consideration of limit state of uh, serviceability and also from the limit state of other requirement today what we are talking of all these things needed to be looked at and few important problems also needed to be handled but unfortunately as a part of the syllabus uh, this is not there but still students can take one small mini project or maybe some sort of an assignment where few problems uh, can also be studied to know more about this so this is where uh, the competency of the students can be addressed and in addition to that i request uh, students to refer to the different codes of practices not only the mother code is 800 2007 we also have many codes connected with the properties of the steel we have codes in connection with uh, uh, different types of uh, sections uh, itself is concerned and also with regard to the uh, type of weld quality of weld quality of boards so separate uh, uh, codes are available I request the students to 
uh, browse the website uh, connected with the Bureau of Indian Standard, know the different types of codes that are needed and many of the codes are present it is easily available in the Google. So student need not have to pay and buy it. So that concept is not there these days because many of these things are now made available through BIS as a free documents. It's not that students need to know only the uh, Indian standard course and today so we have lot lot of international course of practices are uh, existing American course of practices, British course of practices, Australian and New Zealand course of practices. So any country you take uh, every country has uh, its own code so that also needed to be looked at and today if you see it is a competency and uh, students are uh, moving from one country to another country so in the name of higher education and you can also practice in other countries also so that is uh, what the objectives of the current education so students need to know the course of practices of the other country so mobility of the student from one country to another country also has to happen and that is what uh, many of the accreditation agencies are looking at so the national board of accreditation NAC so they're all uh, the agencies uh, they come and inspect your college and whether the quality education is happening or not and with that quality education and where competency is being addressed, where professionalism is being addressed, where skill and attitude of the students are addressed, I am sure. So definitely will be growing to the greater heights. So keeping these things in mind, I request the students to explore the course textbooks, at least one or two textbooks you should know and read it whenever you have the free time. And today, the concept of technical papers so taken from proceedings of the conferences and we have national journals and international journals quality journals from uh, quality platforms so these are all uh, the requirement at least uh, not as a part of the uh, course but when you go to project especially in final year or when you take some sort of a mini project uh, so these are all the materials needed to be explored to know more in that direction so competency, skill, attitude, professionalism is what we need to see in addition to the knowledge what you are acquiring as a part of the lecture. Friends, with this uh, I thank uh, all my students and this is my last class as far as the module uh, uh, 5 is concerned. So if you have uh, any doubts, any clarification, so you can uh, uh, meet me in person in the Department of Civil Engineering of MSRIT or you can even send mails to me, I will be responding and you can also contact me through VTU. So wish you all the best and uh, good luck in future. Thank you.